assuming that now? Alright, hey, Pedal Harder's just gonna give the stream a second, get going here. Okay, I'm gonna pull up the workout. Alright, I got the workout pulled up. I'm going to hang on a sec in case a couple of you are joining me live. Give me a second to get set up as well. Take this opportunity to stretch my back. Alright, let's get rolling here. Here we go. Good old lazy warm up. Five minutes here. It's going to cruise nice and easy. The bad news for you hammerheads is that most of this workout is nice and easy. I was hesitant to put the title of this workout out. Recovery. That doesn't do anything for you, does it? So I call this workout recovery dash steady state. RPM effort, so just denoting that there, are, there is some work in zone two, there are even a little bit of pushes here in the zone three. So more than anything, just trying to be creative with a, a lower end, more recovery focused workout. Hour goes by a little quicker when you have some things to focus on. Take advantage to work on some RPM. Let's fill our RPM up into the eighties. I am lazy here. Getting going. Bring my RPM up into the 80s. Try to bring my cadence up around 85. Remember, keep the power super low right now. Zone one.
It's like my body knew it was going to be a recovery day. I can't keep, get it rolling here. Come on, get the legs moving. There we go. Bring the cadence up to 90 for a minute. Here we go, 90 RPM. Okay, so let's go ahead and force the watts a little bit into zone two. Here we go, 10 minutes here. Nice quality work, zone two. Just trying to settle in somewhere 85 to 90 RPM right now. Get out of the saddle a little bit. Do a quick form check. Make sure your hands comfortable grip. Elbows bent, little shoulders relaxed. Remember my cue. Belly button up a touch and just a touch forward. Engage that core. The important thing about grip is you want to make sure you're riding like you went out on the road. I've had this happen to me where I go out on the road and I hit a bump after I haven't ridden outside for a while and I get thrown off or almost thrown off the handlebars. And it's a good reminder outside there are a lot more 
a lot more going on. You have to watch for the road surface. Uh, you have to balance your bike. <laughs> you have to be aware of cars, other cyclists, runners. So, practice all that when you're riding inside. That way it transfers out to the road. I'm going to bump my RPM up a little bit to the upper range, around 90. Keeping those watts kind of mid, mid towards upper zone two. You can do these workouts with just a heart rate monitor as well. Some people aren't training with power or the same program. You have a correlating heart rate to your power zone, so mid upper zone two. But applies to your heart rate as well. So the workout is broken up into five seven minute intervals. What we're going to do is the first one we'll touch up against upper zone two, lower zone three, comfortable cadence, and then we'll go two minutes where we bump the watts up to mid zone three, but we're going to spin. about five to 10 RPM out of our comfort range. And then we get two minutes recovery. It's a little easier to spin with a higher power, so that's why we bumped up the power. So workload, Workload of is pretty light today, 14 minutes of total sort of mid zone three, and that's it. But working on the cadence. Shows you how mental this is, just because I'm planning for a recovery workout, and like the littlest amount of work, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. I'm so tired. Whereas if we were doing some kind of above threshold work or I'd be all pumped up and ready to go. <laughs> you gotta have recovery workouts. It's great for your aerobic conditioning. Obviously it's great for recovery. You don't get stronger when you're training harder. You're breaking yourself down. You get stronger when you rest. That's how you adapt. So it's like you have to do some work, push yourself, step back, recover, observe how your body adapts, and then get back after your training again. I know we all associate hard work with getting good results, but Part of the discipline of training day in and day out is you have to you have to go with the flow and throw in the recoveries. Just as or more important as. All the intervals, all the creativeness of the training. All right, here we go. Another two and a half minutes here.
So we got some people training with me this morning. Thanks for joining. Hope your legs are coming around better than mine. Actually, I don't. Hope you're suffering with me too on a recovery workout. Good for you. Alright, so we're coming up here. We're going to get into the first block, that seven minute block. Our first three minutes, we get the bump our power up. I'm, you know, hanging out upper zone two, lower zone three. Why don't you do the first one a little bit, just upper zone two. So we get our legs ready to be prepared so we can pedal at higher cadence. It's a great time to really have solid technique. Good session. You got the energy to work on the technique side here, technical side. Keep those heels down up at the top of the stroke. Okay, here we go. Upper zone two. Let's target 85 to 90 RPM. I used to coach more of a heel down push, and then just in doing, you know, fitting um, and coaching and being in my training center for so long, over 12 years now. You know, just observing, we all have a little bit to have our own little style. So I found that the cue of, as long as you're thinking about it, you don't have to force it. You think about loading your pedal stroke when the crank arm is around 12 o'clock with the heels down. Then it allows for a, a nice push without sort of interfering with all of our little bit of our natural tendency or our natural foot angle. Alright, good job. Upper zone two. 85 to 90 RPM. Just broke the sweat. Hopefully you are too. I know that a lot of people are riding, you know, pedals and power meters that are telling them what percentage of left to right they're using. You just thinking about your pedal stroke and being in tune with your body goes a long way. So try to pedal symmetrically, think about your form, both feet, both legs. Because those things can tell you or show you, but they can't do it for you. You've got to get in tune. They may not tell you. I don't think they've made talking ones yet. A little bit of coach humor for those of you that are training in the center with me. Alright, so in 10 seconds we're going to do our high cadence work. We get the bump of the power up. Mid, sort of mid, not quite upper zone three. But here we go. Two minutes. Try to go 8 to 10 RPM out of your comfort range. That might be 90. That might be 110. 
I'm going to shoot for about 105. Here we go. Nice job. Come on, keep your hands up. Them. Heels down at the top, forward and down. Fire those feet, forward and down. Nice, here we go, 20 seconds. Nice work, 85 to 90 RPM, two more minutes here, upper zone two.
Let's do this next RPM, a high cadence, and our drops. So we'll work on change up our position. Alright, so again, mid, I don't want you to ride up on your upper zone three, so somewhere between mid and upper. Here we go. High cadence. Try to target 8 to 10 RPM higher than you're comfortable. Try to get those drops. Maintain good, solid core strength here. Good job, here we go, one minute. Twenty seconds. All right, good job. Recover. Couple big exhales. Maybe those drops with the higher cadence feel a little bit in my hamstrings. Definitely adds a little, a little more challenge to a a little lower end workout. Good job. Take advantage. Nice and relaxed here for a minute. All right, great work. Here we go into our third block. Again, upper zone two. You can creep a little bit. Lower zone three, but I'll leave that up to you. 85 to 90 RPM.
Now remember, this is the block I said we'd start feeling better, so if we don't, I'm going to be disappointed. But if we don't, we still we only have two more, so a little bit of psychology. Focused on your cadence, 85 to 90. Good work, one more minute here. All right, we'll do our cadence work again. Either do it out on your hoods, elbows bent a little, or down in your drops. I'm gonna torture myself in my drops again. Here we go, mid zone three, maybe a touch higher. About 10 RPM out of your comfort zone. Stay on top of that RPM, come on. One more minute. Five seconds. Thirty. Twenty. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. All right. Recover. How are we doing?
As you get out of the saddle, stretch those legs out. Good job. So two more blocks. We've only got two more two minute RPM drills. So and after the next one you only have one more. That's a good way to look at it. Okay, so we're going to get into this three minutes, upper zone two, lower zone three. 85 to 90 RPM. I'm going to sit up on my tops here. Just enjoy this nice, steady work. You know I'm hating that work in the drop, so I got to do the last two in the drops. Sorry. That's how this brain works. You got to see a little challenge, you got you to gotta grab it. Alright, good job. Nice and steady. Just hanging out, upper zone two. A little bit, you're up, you're uh, lower zone free. 85 to 90 RPM. Right now I'm thinking about the connection from my saddle to my feet. So I like internal dialogue is like, are my feet matched up? Do I feel like I'm, you know, have the same heel drop at 12 o'clock? Do I feel like even that my feet are, you know, no one's perfectly the same, symmetrical. So all we do is we try to be. And a lot of that's just our approach to applying our technique. So I constantly do these little checks where are my elbows bent the same, my shoulders relaxed, even my hand placement. Am I holding my bars the same way? All right, good job. 30 seconds here. Still upper zone two, lower zone three, 85 to 90 RPM. All right, here we go, a little more aggressive hand position. Bump that RPM up, about 10 out of your comfort zone. Mid towards upper zone three watts, here we go. Ninety seconds. One 
One minute. High cadence, come on. Come on, 30 seconds. Fifteen. Don't lose any RPM. Come on. Three, two, one. Get me out of these drops. <laughs> All right, nice job. Recover. Whose idea were the drops again? Ah. Enjoy the recovery. About another 40 seconds. Then we have our last block here. zone two, maybe just touching into lower zone three, 85 to 90 RPM. As relaxed as you can be here. Out a little bit. Good, minute and a half down, minute and a half to go here. Upper zone two, low zone three, 85 to 90 RPM.
still waiting for my legs to come around. But I guess they really don't need to today. Not with this workout. Alright, 30 seconds, we'll have our last RPM drill. Five seconds. Remember a little more aggressive hand position. Out on the hoods or in your drops. There we go. And of course on this last one I feel incredible. That's again a joke. 90 seconds, good job, come on. Hi kids. One minute, come on. Big exhale. 30 seconds. Come on, 10 seconds. Good job. Recover. You know those little short RPM bursts are giving me some ideas for some other intervals. We could get really creative. All right, good job. Another minute, Just full recovery here. So we'll finish off just 10 minutes, zone two. Over the course of that 10 minutes, we can ramp it down. So a recovery focused workout, but not definitely not a full recovery, but I, you know, full recovery will be just getting on and just riding zone one, just spinning a little bit, keeping your heart rate really low, not testing your legs at all. So today was definitely lower end focus, recovery focus, but there's still some work in there. We did 25 minutes of sort of upper zone two, 
into that mid upper zone three. Okay, so here we go. Just try to ride 85 plus RPM just in your sort of mid, mid zone two. Nice and relaxed. Don't forget to keep drinking. All right, good. So, again, those of you that joined me live, and for any of those that might watch this and do it on their own, hope you had an awesome workout. Remember, you don't always have to be grinding away to get good quality, good quality training. Out of the saddle a little bit. Good job, eighty five plus RPM. Just hang out in your zone two. Good time for a question. Anybody have a question that's helped riding along? Well, someone says, hello, Kevin. Nice to see you on Zwift. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I don't know who that is. But they're 10 seconds ahead of me. All right, good job. Nice zone two work. To pull your shoulder blades back together. There you go, relax. Sometimes tensing and like releasing gives you awareness. Other thing I'll do, sometimes I'll intentionally point my toes down for like 10, 20 pedal strokes. That helps release me into my back to my natural or preferred stroke. Alright, nice work. 
we're entering into the five minute endorphin high of having accomplished our workout. Enjoy it. So keep, start ramping down your power. Just keep your RPM up. So a lot of these workouts are an hour long. Don't underestimate the value of adding maybe 10 minutes on the front end before we start. Really easy. Really don't even need to look at any metrics. Don't even look at power or cadence. Just pedal. And the same goes on the back end. You, know, you could add 10, 15. Maybe you stretch it out to 30. And just ride, just pedal. Alright, good job. Three more minutes. Finish up the hour. Good job, two minutes. Keep on rolling. So on, on these workouts that I've been sending out that you can download, you know, they're, if you're riding them in herb mode, meaning your trainer is setting that resistance, and really when you're, like I'm doing, you're just having to adjust the cadence. So what I did just right there is I just, I just turned the erg off, because when you write the workouts, if you write them in a range, sometimes it gets confusing you see your power goals changing. So this workout was written in what we call target. So you can see there when I was trying to cool you down, my watts were staying um, fixed in my sort of mid zone two. So what I did there is I just turned the erg off. So now I'm just riding the course, I'm on Zwift. I'm just riding the course, which is simulating a minus 6%. And you can see now my power is really low. I'm just cooling down because I didn't want to ride at that zone 2 anymore. So just letting you know about that feature if you didn't know about it. So now though, if I do come on a hill, I have to ride the hill. But um, I didn't even really pay attention to what course we're on. I think we're in Central Park, so 
Um, shouldn't be anything too tough. Have a question, okay. Written down here by my producer. Are these training sessions based on a particular event or just base? Well, hang on one second. Just base. Well, you haven't done my other workouts then, because those aren't base workouts. So today, recovery, base focused, yes. I mean, any, any workout that you just kind of randomly jump into, you know, if you pull a workout from some program out there, or the, the workout's going to have a, um, there will be a goal to the workout, meaning it was written maybe as a threshold type workout, or in today's case, a little bit more recovery focused, or a base workout. So you sort of have the goal of the day of the workout, if that makes sense. And then it's sort of hot, depending on how you or your coach puts together those workouts would determine the overall outlook of how those workouts work together. I hope that helps. Good question. One thing you can do is just look at your training and be like, what have I been doing? You'll start to see we all, you know, without direction, we tend to gravitate towards workouts we're comfortable with or that we like, that probably lend towards our strength. Um, so um, think about that. You know, it's sort of like training. A lot of times the training just becomes getting out of your comfort zone and doing, doing some intervals and some different stuff that you don't, that you don't like. So, and then making sure you drop in enough recovery so you can actually get benefit from your workouts. I will tell you, I would say the majority of people that I observe don't do enough, as you might say, base. And when I call base, is zone one, zone two riding. And that you can do a lot of. You can accumulate a lot of time, a lot of volume. And that's what lays the base for doing all these creative intervals and intensity. Okay. Appreciate the interaction. Thanks for the question. Y'all make your day awesome. Have a good one. Good workout.